Welcome to From the Pastor's Heart, where faith, wisdom, and real life experiences come together to inspire and uplift. I'm Pastor Patrick Reed, and I'm thrilled to have you here with me today on this journey of reflection, encouragement, and spiritual growth. In each of these episodes, we'll dive into the core of what it means to live out our faith with authenticity and compassion. Whether you're looking for practical advice, profound insights, or just a little encouragement to get you through the week, you're in the right place. We'll be hearing from our pastors and other leaders in the church who are living out their faith in remarkable ways. Their stories and their struggles and triumphs will be a glimpse into the heart of our church that is driven by love, prayer, and grace. So let's grab a cup of coffee, find your favorite spot, and let's explore what it means to walk through this journey together. Hey, saints of God, this is Pastor Howard from Crane Eater Community Church, and this is the pastor's heart. Sometimes I fail to mention that, but I'm sure it's all over the Facebook and everywhere else on YouTube. I wanted to go right into the Word this evening and give you a word from the book of Genesis chapter 11. Genesis chapter 11. Verse 1 talks about the Tower of Babel and how that tower changed the perspectives, really, of what man could do uh, with each other because they were working so in such a, a mutual way that they had decided within themselves. They didn't get God's permission to build a tower up into the sky. And I'm sure they were gonna worship it and everything that they were gonna do and all everybody spoke the same language. There wasn't any confusion, so God took care of that. He took care of that so that men and women could grow, that we would not rely on ourselves. There's so many reasons why God would do that. I thank God that he knows the best for all that. In Genesis, after that happened, in Genesis chapter 11, you can see in verse 31 some powerful verses of scriptures that I got into my spirit several, several years ago. And I just want to read them to you. I'm going to read it from the New King James. And Terah, Terah took his son, listen to this, Abram, Abram and his grandson Lot, the son of Haran, and his daughter in law Sarah, his son Abram's wife, and they went out with them from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to the land of Canaan. Terah felt led to go into the land of Canaan. Listen to this. Verse 1, verse, let's look at verse 31, 30, yeah, 32. And they came to Haran and dwelt there. This is the last part of verse 31. Let me back up and read it to you. And they went out with them from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to the land of Canaan. The land of Canaan, that would be the Israelites' land. To go to the land of Canaan, and they came to Haran and dwelt there. They stopped. Terah said, I'm going to take you, Abram and Lot and Sarah, and I'm going to take you into the land of Canaan. But he stopped. He stopped and dwelt in the land of Haran. Now look, at, listen to verse 1 of Genesis chapter 12. Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. 
to a land that I will show you. Has he shown you the land of peace? More than likely, you're in the land that you're supposed to be right now. Sometimes we try to finagle our way out of it. We don't like the pressure and the intensity of what we feel. But God has us right there. And sometimes like Joseph, we're in a strange land, even imprisoned wrongfully. Wrongfully imprisoned. But like Joseph said in Genesis chapter 50, to his brothers, he said, what you intended for my bad, God, God turned it for my good. He turned it for my good. So God's in, God's in control. I don't care how many years it's been. I got some prayers that I've been praying for many, many years, but God's in control and he's going to answer that. He hears the prayers of the faithful he hears the, the effectual, fervent, righteous man or woman avails much. One translation says, the red hot prayers of a righteous man or woman gets the job done. And I like that translation. So, God himself told Abram, he said, all right, I want you to leave Terah. He was going into the Canaan land, but he stopped. And there was reasons. He had pagan gods. He had things in his life that didn't prepare him for the land of Canaan. He would have rebelled against it because he was in rebellion. When you read the scriptures, you'll see Abram's, uh, Abram's dad served other gods. So Abram heard Yahweh. Abram heard God. And God told him to leave everything. Take, take Sarah. Lot. Leave everything and go into the land of Canaan. And this is what God said I will do in the land of Canaan. I will make you a great nation. Did we see that happen? Did we see that transpired? Maybe not in some ways, but yes, in other ways. I will bless you, God says. You see, we want it to happen in our generation. Sometimes, sometimes things happen on God's timetable. It's not even in our generation. It's another generation. But God's in control. Listen to what he tells Abram. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. And you, that's our part, and you shall be a blessing. Verse 3, I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse those, or him, who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So, you know, we would be foolish to say that Father Abraham's not important and Mother Sarah is not important because that's how we're supposed to see them as people of faith. Even though Abram lied about Sarah and even though Sarah laughed, they were they were touched by God and God has had his hands on them and they fulfilled God's plan because look at the 21st, the 21st generation. Look where we are now. Look how blessed we are. I know spiritually things are not solid in many, many, many places. But as Christians and as believers, we need to have the perspective of the best is yet to come. So I'm seeing good things. I'm seeing that if you'll follow the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll get in his will, things are going to turn around for you. They turned around for Joseph. They turned around for, for Abram. They'll turn around for you. Amen? They'll turn around for you. Now the Apostle Paul said in Philippians, he said, Press on toward that mark of the prize of the high calling. 
which is Christ Jesus. Press on. Don't look back, forgetting those things that are behind. Have no apprehensions of the future because I'm pressing on. There's a prize. There's a prize for me. There's a prize for you. We're going to press on until the end. And we're going to receive that prize. And you think sometimes we have a rapturous time, a rapturous events here on this earth. But when the catching away truly comes, when God comes to get his church, the body of Christ, we're going to go up. We're going to go up and we're going to meet our Lord in the air. And so we'll be with him forever. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. 